all you Wish Upon a Vloggers and welcome back to Retro Freddy's. Uh, you're really welcome and I absolutely love doing these videos. Really look forward to making them every week. I have picked an utter Christmas movie classic, a legendary movie. One of the best movies out there. It is one of my favourite movies and it's definitely way up there for my favourite must watch. Christmas movies. Now, very briefly, if you have not seen the movie Edward Scissorhands, oh my goodness, I am sure so many people uh, will be saying, you know, you need to go and watch this ASAP. Now, I want to really quickly show you something. I know this is not anything to do with this video, but I was out in a store with my mum and dad tonight and my father actually got me this. I hope it shows up on the camera okay. Um, I am obsessed with Tinkerbell and I seen it and I was like, it's like a little hangy thing. Uh, that reminds me of Tinkerbell and my dad got it for me. It kind of looks like I'm putting the ball over my eye and that looks really weird. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was magical. So I thought I would show you. So I suppose I kind of wanted to show you because it kind of almost looks like an ice sculpture. And of course, Edward Scissorhands uh, character, of course, you know, he's amazing at ice sculptures. And this movie is so Christmassy. It's so heartwarming. It's so magical. Now, of course, I have my um, pieces of notes with me, guys, so that I don't forget anything I want to say. You can let me know what you think of this movie and if you watch it every year. I always watch it in and around between mid to end of November, and I actually watched it last night. I love watching this movie every year. I have to watch it every single year without fail. And um, this movie is, you know, pretty much now we're coming up to uh, three decades Old. And the way I would sort of describe this movie, if someone asked me, well, you know, what sort of type of movie is it or what sort of genre would you put this movie in? I would describe it as it's a Christmassy film. It's uh, a gothic romantic fantasy sort of like uh, story. And it's just absolutely the sweetest like, it's sad, but at the same time, it has such a sweet storytelling to it. And I just want to sort of say as well, from down to the cast, to, you know, makeup, especially costume. I mean, I absolutely think Edward Scissorhands' character looks absolutely fantastic. Like, that costume is just unbelievable. And it has actually inspired so many people. Like, look at how many people that dress up as Edward Scissorhands, be it Comic-Con, be it Halloween. I mean, when I went to Madrid, I absolutely love Madrid. Um, I actually seen a guy um, on the street in a place called Saul, beautiful by the way and he was dressed like Edward Scissorhands and it was that so much down to the T he looked so identical that for us you know like for a second you're like is that Edward Scissors is that Johnny Depp you know but it wasn't but uh as as I went to kind of like go over to get a photograph he like ran like the speed of lightning so maybe it was the end of a shift or something and he's seen me and he's been like yeah she's looking for a photograph run or maybe he just thought I looked like a crazy lady and he was just like yeah avoid no I'm just joking guys but yeah that's how I would describe it and of course this movie was uh directed by Tim Burton legendary Tim Burton uh I absolutely love Tim Burton I am a massive massive fan of Tim Burton love Sleepy Hollow love Nightmare Before Christmas which I actually did for my uh retro Friday last week um Corpse Bride you know, we could sit here all night and go over all the all of his movies, but you know, you just get the gist. I love um, Tim Burton, uh, but this the uh, the screen uh, writing for this movie, you no know, storytelling or whatever you want to call it, was written by both Tim Burton and uh, a girl called Caroline Thompson. But what's so interesting about Caroline Thompson, which I sort of want um, to get to, um, she actually based. Uh, the character of Edward Scissorhands partly of herself because more when she was younger because you know how it's sort of based on you know sort of feeling like rejected feeling isolated in ways you know she felt like that when she was younger so that's why and sort of feeling lonely so that's why she uh, sort of wrote the st his character in that way for this story of Edward Scissorhands um, but also as well the character uh, of Edwards was actually based on her dog, believe it or not. And apparently Johnny Depp was just sort of like speaking to her and sort of like trying to understand the character a little bit more in the beginning when he got the role. 
um, and she just sort of explained, uh, you know, like about her dog and everything. And then apparently after that, I was just like, okay, I get it now. I know, like, I don't know, I, I know quite a lot of massive fans of Tim Burton and things like that will maybe know this, but I really wanted to add this in, you know, especially for anybody, you know, who maybe didn't know that information. I hope it was a fun fact um, for maybe some of you. Um, so, of course, you know, uh, you know, it's a Tim uh, Burton movie straight away, you know, because it has, guess who in it? Johnny Depp, obviously, who plays the lead character, Edward Scissorhands. Now, for any of you that don't know, Johnny Depp is actually my all-time favourite actor in uh, the world. And, of course, Danny Elfman does the movie, or sorry, the movie, sorry, Danny Elfman does the music, uh, the, all the music for this uh, movie. So, of course, you know, we've got Danny Elfman doing the music score. We've got Johnny, De Johnny Depp, you know, tick. So, you know, that's how, you know, a mile away, you know, that it's a, it's a Tim Burton movie, you know. And uh, Danny Elfman, I've spoke many times before in Retro Fridays, because, of course, for one of my Retro Fridays, I did, you know, Evil Dead movies. And, of course, you know, Danny Elfman did the music for those. He did the music for, of course, you know, the theme tune of The Simpsons. You know, he basically just does all the good stuff. You know, that's how you know his music, you know, a mile off. And, you know, this movie... Uh, about Edward sort of, uh, of course, obviously massively focuses on him, you know, feeling isolated and, and, and lonely. And what I love about this movie is that that's what the movie is. We sort of see the movie from Edward's eyes and how he sort of sees things throughout the film. And I think that's really, really smartly done um, between, you know, sort of obviously Tim Burton and Caroline Thompson, who wrote the story for this. I just think that is just very smart that they done that, in my opinion. Um, and Edward's character, you know, you feel so sorry for him straight away. Um, and the character Peg, you know, she brought Edward from, uh, you know, his gothic style mansion, you know, very much so. I think it's a very gothic style. Of course, we know that. Um, you know, up on a big hill, um, you know, she takes him from there into a very suburban uh, area, which I have an interesting fact on that for you in a minute. Straight away, you know, obviously she felt so sorry for him, but we did also too, because at the beginning of the movie, you know, when she goes up to, you know, his, you know, like gothic -y looking mansion or whatever, where he, where he lives, basically where he resides, she walks in uh, to the and sees the whole, you know, big garden where, you know, you see all his masterpieces that, you know, he's cut out with his, you know, scissor hands. The big dragon that looks as though, you know, he's been swimming underwater or whatever. And there's like other other ones as well, like a hand and everything, um, which is very interesting as well. And it's just beautiful. And like the music by Danny Elfman. It's breathtaking, it's stunning, it's, it literally is spine chilling, it gives you the freaking well shivers and like hats off seriously because it's one of, probably one of the best music scores in any film in film history and it perfectly goes with, um, you know, the scenes and you know, even at the end of the movie where, um, you know, the boy, uh, Kim's boyfriend's up at the top of, you know, the roof space or wherever you want to call it. And the music changes quite suddenly when he sort of comes out and you see him there. And it's like really, you know, dark and mysterious music. And it's just, it really gives you just the right feels at the right moments. Um, and yes, you know, the music I find quite sad and nostalgic because, you know, I am in my 30s. And this movie's been out for practically three decades now. But it just hits you in the feels but in a good way in a sad emotional beautiful good way I hope I am making sense she she feels sorry for him and as the audience we I personally felt really uh I feel really uh sorry for him straight off the bat from the very beginning of the movie for his character and reason being as well is you know you see this large garden and it looks very well maintained and very I suppose homely for a garden you know very much so lived in but then you know Parrot Peg goes into you know his big mansion and it's extremely cold feeling straight away it's not it doesn't look lived in at all in any way and it's that massive feeling of isolation before she even goes up to 
meet Edward for the first time, you feel that sense of an isolation is going on within that um, mansion. And I just think that's just really well scripted and really well done. So, you know, obviously I think hats off on that. Now the street, the suburban area street, I find so freaking well fascinating because that actually, that street I remember years ago I looked this up because I can remember watching it. I mean, my boyfriend were like, "That can is that street real though?" Because you know, did they maybe just make that up or something? Because you know, would, do people really live on that sort of like? Do streets really look like that in those sorts of parts, like suburban areas where I don't know? So we looked it up, and basically, it the way it was was that was a, a street that was just brand newly made, and these were new homes. So the people that live there, um, you know, they were doing different wee things to it and making like windows and stuff smaller in the houses. And of course, you know, from the awesome pastel, uh, bright, mad colours that they used, you know, everything had to be a certain way, you know, very particular, you know, there were a nosy crowd, there were a bit of a weird crowd um, in this movie. <laughs> Some idiots like standing out, like having a gossip, you know, committee meeting, you know, on the street just weird and that matched in well with you know the pastel colors and everything that they used and then they had like those pastel colors you know for the cars and then when they were all driving out of the street there was like a blue car you know another different color car yellow or whatever and it just looks so mad to me it's like okay there's the simpsons and, and and then there's this you know like imagine if you did like a whole street up like the simpsons i know a guy actually did like a house off you know the simpsons home but i'm just saying like imagine like if you did a street that looked like Family Guy or The Simpsons or something, but this looks even more like, you know, I don't know, like crazy. So I just thought that was really cool. And people, the residents that were actually living in that them houses at the time when this whole movie, Edward Scissorhands, was being made, those adjustments and things and like painting or whatever they needed to do was actually going on while they were, you know, doing their daily living, you know, sitting doing their housework or... um watching TV and getting on with their family lives, you know, they had to compensate with that. And it probably annoyed them at first from what I read, but then they kind of just got used to it. Adam and just sitting thinking like, you know what? I can tell people that my street that I just moved into was used for a freaking movie with the lead character, Johnny Depp. Heck to the freaking well, yes. I wouldn't have been complaining. Now, as I say, Johnny Depp is my favorite uh, actor, um, but Joyce uh, would probably be yeah, I'd say she'd be my second. As much as I love Winona Ryder in this as Kim, Joyce would be my favourite, probably my second, sorry, my second favourite, because of course Edward Scissorhands is the best in this movie in general. Joyce, freaking well header, you know, one of the neighbours. Uh, she's just a complete nutter nut job and she's crazy, she's just like I am. So that's probably why I relate to her character and I like her character so much because she's just such an agent and she's just absolutely makes me uh giggle to my stomach sore basically she's just so out there and you're just like oh my gosh imagine i would literally love to have a neighbor like her that's just so random like random like me i'd be like come on over for a cup of coffee coffee anytime love i sit down and have a conversation with you and laugh my head off um but what i noticed was the the gates right at edward's uh, mansion kind of kind of reminded me of you know the gates in the nightmare before christmas i know that could be intentional because this movie obviously was out before the nightmare um before christmas what really broke my heart and what really breaks my heart in this movie is of course we see flashbacks throughout the movie of you know edward and his father but the most heartbreaking one was when his father had made these you know hands for him and you know he was so happy you could see in his eyes he was just so happy and it's such a sweet moment and then of course you know we all know that the sad moment's coming but um his father takes you know a heart attack and that's just so soul destroying and absolutely devastating because we have already invested so much in this character and feeling like oh you know i feel so sorry for him and then that happens and you're just like Mm -mm, you know <laughs> but something fun that you might find a fun uh, little fact for you guys the scissor hands that were actually made uh, for Edward Scissorhands' character were actually made by a guy that actually worked on uh, Terminator movies, Jurassic Park and all that. So I just thought I would add that in for anybody interested. But something I find really weird was, you know, when she brought him home to the house, right? And at the dinner table with the family, there was a fork sitting beside him and she gives him a meal with potatoes and everything and carrots, but also peas. And I'm sort of sitting here there thinking to myself, why would you give him a fork for starters or even set it anywhere near him why would you give him peas but I think from watching it you know from what I took from it it's sort of like 
it's meant to be kind of like for the audience to kind of pick up on that and sort of maybe see a funny side to it because maybe she she didn't want to make him feel isolated that's how i see it and i think that is so freaking smart smart of um tim burton and caroline thompson because they thought you know what but if she doesn't set a fork uh, at his place at the table and if she do if she doesn't give him peas he's going to notice and that's maybe going to make him feel that he that he is you know he should be feeling isolated and that he should feel that he's feeling left out or something you know even worse so that's really cool i thought that that was actually you know thought about you know in great detail and that they actually added that in and although this is a serious story I actually think there's a lot of humorous parts in this movie as well. You know, they, they did add in bits of humour throughout the movie. And I don't think it affected, you know, the tone of the movie, you know, it being a serious story all about Edward's character. I don't I don't think it it, it did. Um, I love when uh, Bill, you know, who's the father, of course, is cutting like a head. And it's just like a normal little head. And he's just got normal cutters. And he's just like cut, cut, you know, no energy, no effort. And Edward's just walks over like, nah, mate, that's not how it's done. I'm going to show you how it's done. And he goes over and he chops uh, this awesome looking big large uh, dinosaur out of a hedge. And he's just looking at it like really impressed looking. And then he starts using them, you know, for, you know, doing things around the garden and everything. Uh, but he's going to let me know what your favourite thing was that Edward, uh, you know, you know, cut, you know, what was your favourite uh, animal or whatever that he cut. For me personally, it is 100% without a shadow of a doubt the two swans because swans are my all-time favorite bird in the world especially but i love the white swans right but see the black swans wow absolutely stunning i, I love swans right <laughs> just gotta put that out there but another funny scene was when kim walked into her bedroom and you know obviously she didn't know edward was staying there and she was looking in the mirror and everything and uh, she seen him and then she screamed and he was like but it was really awkward but funny because he's sort of lying there with his like scissor hands and just like she doesn't know I'm lying here yet. <laughs> and then she scares the, or he scares the crap out of her. And then like he busts, because she has a water bed. Like I thought that was hilarious that they added that in. Out of all the beds in the world that this girl could have freaking well had, she had a water bed. Again, smartly thought up to all lads to the, you know, the movie. Um, and, uh, you know, the water's going everywhere. And it's, it, I don't know. I still find that scene so funny to say anybody else find that part funny. You can, you know, let me know. But uh, yeah, and uh, I just think it's such a sweet story. Um, those two characters, Kim and Edward, you know, of course, it's a massive part of, you know, the movie, a massive part of the story. And I just love how their characters and their story, you know, unfold it. Now, apparently, and I say apparently because I don't know Winona Ryder, love her in Stranger Things, love her in so many movies, but I love her. But what I will say is this is only apparently because, you know, I just read about it so you know I don't know whether she's ever said this in an interview or whatever but I remember reading about it years ago but apparently she um didn't really or couldn't really relate to her character Kim but you know all I can say is you know fair enough but I actually loved her character and I and you know I personally don't see any issues there um but whether or not that's true is, you know, I don't know. Um but what still makes me uh shiver to this day, every time I watch it, I, I shivered last night watching it. It's one of the most magical movie or magical moments in, in film, I think. And one of the most famous, it probably is the most famous scene in Edward Scissorhands. Um, and most people's favourite, you can let me know if it's your favourite. Um, when Edward is outside their house and, uh, you know, the Christmas lights and everything out, uh, outside have just been put up. And the happy holidays above the roof. And he's carving a massive ice sculpture and it's her it's off Kim and she has wings and everything and you're like oh he sees her from his eyes as an angel he looks at her with his eyes through his eyes he sees an angel and he makes an ice sculpture of her with big wings and she's wearing you know the beautiful white dress and she's just sort of spinning around and she is so so happy and, you know, as he's carving, it looks like there's snow falling down on her. And that scene where she's just, you know, spinning around and she's just in another world, basically. And, yeah, it's just 
wow it really does hit you like no matter how many times you've seen it and that's the thing about this movie it never ages i mean it's like pretty much you know it's 30 decades old or 30 decades old stop talking julie <laughs> three decades old just just give up Julie at this stage um so you know we're gonna move on from that and it still hasn't aged is what I was basically trying to say but you know god bless him like he just in that moment oh that is the most sweetest romantic thing like that he done for her honestly and um you know obviously her boy and this her boyfriend is an utter ass another ass jack I don't even know what an ass jack is but I've just made it up there there's a new thing someone's an idiot they're an ass jack i just made it up there now it's copyright so you can't use it no i'm joking guys <laughs> why do i keep talking it's getting worse but um <laughs> things go really bad for edward of course at the end guys and you know kim just says run you know she tells him to run because you know all she wants to do is protect him you know you do whatever you can when you're in love and you know she then not long after that you know runs up to him and goes up to his wrist space and wherever I'm just calling it a wrist space, whatever you want to call it guys. Um and uh Edward's sort of standing there with her and her boyfriend, you know, sort of appears from the corner and he's got a you know a gun on his hand and he's gonna kill Edward and um he obviously got what he deserved, you know, it's I I always laugh because he's like, you know what, you got what you deserved, you fool and she whispers in Edward's ears, I love you and oh so cute they're so cute together they're like the sweetest movie couple ever like oh so cute um and of course she comes out you know and pretends the rest of the street you know oh, all the nosy weirdos that uh he's dead and you know sort of shows like one of his you know scissor hands as like evidence um you know because of course she's she's besought it with him they're they're in love so she's protecting all she can to protect him and then um this then takes us back to how the movie starts which is you know of course obviously um kim or ramona Ryder or whatever you want to call is really old and she's you know sort of talking and telling the story and i love how it starts the same way it ends with you know ramona Ryder, and you know she's sort of saying i know he's still alive but i wanted him to remember me the way i was back then and um you know, she's basically saying that she, the reason she 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 knows that Edward is still alive is because it still snows and it wouldn't be snowing if he wasn't still up there. And ah, well, and then you know, you're just sort of going, but you, please just go up and see him. Just go up and hug him and kiss him and just please go. And then she even says, sometimes you can still catch me dancing on it. But what is so magical is instead of them showing her, you know, still dancing and occasionally, like she said, she still does sometimes, she still catch her doing it. They didn't show her as she was there and then telling the story, really old. They showed the exact same clip of when she was so happy and smiling and in her own world when Edward was first, you know, carving her angelic ice sculpture and I, that's the exact way she wanted him to remember her and they showed that um but they showed that um around about the scene where edward was seen up in his roof space uh and he was you know at, it was dark at night and he was you know sort of like constantly chopping the the ice sculptures that's a magical beautifully shot scene i mean the cinematography in this film is amazing and it's proof that you do not need massive cgi to have a brilliant storytelling freaking movie and an epic movie i hate the word epic unless something's epic but this is epic the word totally perfect for this um movie and um He's, you know, carving those ice sculptures and you can see all the, you know, what looked like snow is like what she's talking about, you know. I know he's still up there because it wouldn't be snowing otherwise, pretty much. And that's what, you know, you see that scene of her dancing around in the snow, you know, sort of like, you know, going round and round in circles. But I think the reason why that shot was done, well, it could be fairly obvious, but this is how I see it. He can let me know or am I just being weird? But to me, that's because as he's, you know, carving the ice, he, at the end of the film, is envisioning and imagining in his head that moment of when she and him were so happy when he had just carved her ice sculpture and she was just 
dancing around in it. I just, I think that is what, I mean, it's probably fairly obvious, but that's what I love is what I'm basically trying to say. I just love this gosh darn movie. The music, the music score is phenomenal. It's, it's out of this world. Honestly, Danny Elfman should just do the music for most movies in the world, like every movie in the world. Like, obviously you can't, but you know what I'm saying. You've got my favourite actor in the whole entire world. Well, male actor anyways. You have, you know, Tim Burton freaking worked on the movie, directed the movie, you know, screen wrote the movie. Then you've got, you know, uh, just the characters were fantastic in this movie. Brilliant cast. Brilliant feel to it. Just the whole gosh darn movie is amazing. And you have to watch it at Christmas, in my opinion. Let me know when you all watch it. But I think I've talked for way, way, way too long. So I'm going to leave you there, guys. And I hope you've enjoyed this. And until my next video, don't forget that the Force will be with you always. Bye, guys.